Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be continuing our introduction to geometry and today we're going to be talking about the orthocenter of a triangle ABC. I'm going to invite you here just to pause for five minutes, read the problem, and see what do you think. How would you go ahead and prove this? And now let's begin. So the idea behind this lesson is to show that the orthocenter exists in other words, that the heights of any triangle all intersect at one point called the orthocenter. And here we're going to look at first an acute triangle, acute angled, so that all the angles are less than 90 degrees. And then we'll talk about a right triangle and an obtuse one. So we have, say, A, B, C, and we want to show that their heights all intersect out at a single point. Now, how do we do this? And the answer is one way that it's sometimes easier to get what you need in general to hold true. Well, sometimes what you need when you're trying to prove that three points are all passed with the same point, sometimes what you do is you intersect two of those lines and prove that the third line goes through that point, right? It's, you don't prove this directly, but rather you first intersect two, and then you maybe have two other points which form this line, and you prove that these three points are collinear. And that is sort of the approach we're going to take. So we're going to call, we're going to intersect, what is it called, BE and CF, and we'll call their intersection H. And now we'll prove that AH is in fact perpendicular to BC. And in virtue of it being perpendicular to BC, we'll have that AD is, goes through H, right? Because there can only be, there's only one line through A that's perpendicular to BC. So now how do we do this? And the answer is we need to chase some angles. And now what do we do? We're going to need to find the angle right here, this angle. And if AH is perpendicular to BC, what will this angle be equal to? Well, the answer is if you sort of like intersect, and you, if, if this was 90 and this was D, what would we have in triangle CBA? The sum would need to be 180. And because this is 90, that means this angle plus this angle would have to be 90. In other words, if this whole angle is gamma or Y, then we would need to prove that this is 90 minus gamma. And also, if we prove this is 90 minus gamma, then when we intersect AH here, we will get that this angle must be 90, which proves that AH is perpendicular to BC. So this is what we sort of need. Now, the next question is, what is it that we have in this diagram? Without D, forget about D for now. Well, what is it that we already have? And the answer is we have quadruplets of concyclic points. Now, which ones? Well, I invite you here, maybe pause for three minutes, ask yourself which points are concyclic. And the answer is, well, you have the angle BFC is 90 and BEC is 90. So that gives you that BFEC are concyclic, which means there's a circle that goes through these four points. It's not the most beautiful circle in the world, but it illustrates a point. Now, the thing we have with concyclic points is sometimes we have, we have these two angles were the same. But what we get when we figure out something is concyclic is we get new angles. And that's why this is important. So now if this angle is gamma, what is the angle BFE? That is this angle right here. Well, because they're on opposite sides of a chord of the chord BE, the points F and C, 
This means that this angle right here is 180 minus gamma. Or in other words, this angle right here is gamma. The angle EFA is now gamma. And now my question to you is, is there anything else you notice? Any other four points that are on the same circle that are concyclic? And the answer is, well, yeah. Now I have HFA plus HEA is 90 plus 90, which is 180. So these four points are concyclic. And with that, and this is why also 90 degree angles are cool in geometry, because when you have like two 90 degree angles in these heights, you can have concyclic points on two ends. And that's what this gives like you have concyclic points here and here. If these angles like BEC and BFC were equal, but they weren't 90, we wouldn't have that these, these four points were also concyclic. So that's why this is cool. And with this in mind, what do we have? We have that these four points also are on the same circle. And now again, we found concyclic points and they can give us something else, something we didn't have before. And now they give us that AFE, which is the angle on this chord, is equal to AHE, which is also gamma. Okay? So actually, let's write down what we had. We had that the angle ACB is equal to the angle ECB is then equal to 180 minus the angle EFB, which is equal to the angle EFA, which we've now shown is equal to the angle uh, EHA. Okay? With me so far? Good. So now the angle EHA is gamma. We need this one to be 90 minus gamma, which means we need this one to be 90. Do we have that? And the answer is yes, we do. Because now we know that BFBEA, the angle BEA, is equal to the angle HEA, because these three are on the same line. Mind you, A H was just an intersection of two lines. Is 90. So H E A is 90. This one is equal to gamma, which means that because the angle H E A plus the angle E H A plus the angle E A H because this is 180 and we have this thing is 90 this means that 90 plus gamma plus the angle EAH is equal to 180 boom boom 90 move the gamma on the other side and you get that the angle EHA is equal to 90 minus gamma and now we know this is 90 minus gamma. And so when we intersect this here, we will get a point, we'll call this point D prime. And we'll get that this angle plus this angle, plus actually what did I say, I said plus this angle, plus this angle, plus this angle right here. The sum of these angles in the triangle AD prime C is 180. And so because the sum of these two is equal to 90. That means that this angle right here is 90. And now because a d prime is perpendicular to BC and d prime is on BC, because d satisfy like d is defined in the same way, and there's only one such point on BC, that means d prime and d are essentially the same point. And so we've shown that AD, BE, and CF all go through the same point. And this point is called the orthocenter of the triangle ABC. Now, how many concyclic 
quads of points do we have? I invite you here to pause you know, for three minutes and think about this. Now that we've proved all of this fact. And the answer is, well, we have many more. And if you think about things now symmetrically, and this is a point that will come up again and again in geometry, is symmetries. A, D, B, E, C, F. These are defined in the same way, like almost analogously defined, right? I mean, they are analogously defined. A perpendicular from one to the other side. And if we had like that, these four points are concyclic, right? C is to F what B is to E what A is to D. And now if we had these four points were concyclic, because of this symmetry, we should also have that B, E, A, D are concyclic. And if we look at B, E, A, and D, we have this angle, B, D, A is 90, B, E, A is 90. And so these are also concyclic. And now again, and then the final one, we have A, F, D, C are also concyclic, right? We can pick these two quadruplets. Now, what was the thing with H? We had that A, E, H, F were concyclic. So what can we do with that? What is sort of like H is sort of the same to all of them. Now we had H, E, F, and A. E and F are to A, like this pair, are what E and D are to C. So we should expect to have H, E, D, C to be concyclic. And we do because we have these two are 90 degrees. H, D, C plus H, E, C is a 90 plus 90, which is 180. And finally, we need, when we have H, E, D, D and F. So E and D are to C, what the pair D, F is to B. And we also have that these four are concyclic. Metal, like are you saying just like these pairs are, this to A is the same as this to C, isn't a proof. It's a way to help you motivate the ideas that we see in the problem. And that is what competitive mathematics is very much about. At a certain point, it's about ideas. It's about coming up with ideas to solve a problem. You can have a lot of background knowledge that can help you, but at the end of the day, you need to find these general principles that you use that give you the ideas for how to solve a problem. Now, this finishes our talks on the orthocenter, center, and these are the only four quadruplets. Actually, I've said something that I forgot, but I should have also gone over the obtuse case and the right triangle case. First, the right triangle. When we really have a right triangle, say with the angle A being 90, A, B, C, what is the perpendicular from B to the line A, C? The answer is it's A. So A is the same as E. And it's the same as F. And it's the same as H. Right? Everything collapses into A, except the point D remains here. And if you're ever having to do analogies, where you're having one or center and another, you can think of A really as the ortho center of a right triangle. And it is generally thought of as that. Now in the obtuse case, what do we have? We have a triangle. Let me draw one here. So what do I have? I have A, ABC is obtuse. 
which means that because this is more than 100, more than 90, this will be less than 90, so these perpendiculars will be here on the outsides. And then they will meet at this point H. So what do we call this? We call this points F and E. Now, do you see anything interesting about this picture as it compares to this one? And the answer is, well, there is is something so like it's not just the answer, but it's one answer is that look, A here, like the angle B H C, mind you, if this was alpha, this would be alpha, and because these are 90, this would be 180 minus alpha, right? So, but if alpha is greater than 90, then we'd have 90 minus alpha is going to be less than zero or 180 minus alpha when we add 90 to both sides is less than 90. So if ABC is a, is a triangle that is obtuse, the triangle HBC is a, what's it called? It's an acute triangle. So we have that A sort of plays a similar role as H did here. It's very similar to what H was here. It's like they flipped sides. And that is in fact what happened here. The proof behind AH being perpendicular to BC is completely analogous. Because mind you, we need to prove AH was perpendicular to to BC. Here we would, it's the same as proving HA is perpendicular to BC. Now it should be told, I shouldn't get too ahead of myself, there is a thing we would need to perhaps show that this whole angle isn't bigger than a hundred and a uh, big, bigger than 90. And the reason it's not is because let's see, this is gamma and because this is 180 minus alpha, this angle is alpha minus 90. So this whole angle is alpha plus gamma minus 90. Now, if this, there's, there are many ways we can go about proving this. One way is add beta and subtract beta. And you really have that this angle is equal to 180 minus 90 minus beta, or it's equal to 90 minus beta. And it also makes sense because this angle right here is beta and this is 90. So this angle right here is going to be less than 90. So we are going to have a, the same thing we had here, an acute triangle. And we'll just follow the same steps we did here. Now, this also just gives you an important thing to note about the orthocenter is that the orthocenter of ABC, if that's H, then A is the orthocenter of HBC. And sometimes this change of perspective can help you with problems. Now, this finishes up all our talks about the orthocenter. And as always, thanks for problem solving.